This Q&A is brought to you by me, Corey Yoder, and by this little guy who showed up on the cutting table as soon as we turned on the lights here to film. So we are going to be doing a Q&A of questions that you all submitted a couple weeks back. I had asked if you had any questions. I asked here on YouTube, Instagram, and over on Facebook, and I got in so many great questions. Um, so some of them require a little bit more in-depth chatting or maybe a demo or maybe even a whole video just dedicated to whatever the question was. But for today, I have cut apart some of the, the questions, added them to my little bowl of goodies, and I'm gonna take some time to answer some of your questions. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to have Ryan set a timer for 20 minutes. I am going to draw questions out for 20 minutes. We'll see how many we get answered. And when the time is up, that's the end of the Q&A and we'll just tuck away the rest of the questions for another day. So are we ready? Timer is being set. He's got a fancy watch back there. He's, he's a runner, so he has one of those I suppose you can set a timer even if your watch isn't fancy, but he has a fancy watch and the timer is set. So let's go ahead and dive into these questions. All right. First question comes from Laura Marshall. What do you use to recolor your patterns? I would like to learn more about what designers use to decide fabric placement when looking at a pattern. I use Electric Quilt 8 for a lot of my pattern design work. It's what a lot of pattern designers use for mocking up their quilts and trying out different fabrics. Um, I believe there are also a lot of apps, maybe not a lot, but there are apps that you can use for just trying out fabric placement. And um, I don't have a lot of information about those apps, but if you use an app for recoloring quilts, just chime in in the comments because I feel like I've heard of different apps that you can use. Electric Quilt 8 is a paid program, so it's not uh, maybe as user-friendly if you're just wanting to try some different things out. You might want to do that without having to make a big investment into a program. The other program I use is also a paid program. Uh, Adobe Illustrator would be one that I would use too, but again, not as user-friendly just to sort of try things out um, on your own without a bigger investment. So like I said, if you have some suggestions for apps that allow you to recolor, chime in and let us know because I think that's great information. And the other thing I wanna say, feel free to chime in as I am chatting specifically about the tools that I get asked about. I know there are some questions in my little bin of goodies here about what rulers I like or techniques I like. And I feel like every quilter uses something a little bit different. And just because I like something doesn't mean it's going to be the best option for you. So if you use something different or if you have a different method that you like, feel free to comment away so that whoever's asking the question has lots of different suggestions. All right, moving on to our next question. All right, I've got a couple stapled together here, so that means that a few different people wondered the same thing. So we have Christine. Can you discuss the amount of 108 inch fabric needed for backing versus pieced backing? Conversion table, I always struggle to know how much 108 inch wide backing fabric I need. And Holly, had the same question. I would love to hear your opinion on when to use a wide back versus piecing a backing, how to figure out yardage for a wide back, and maybe tips on how to size the wide back to your top. So if you have followed me here for any length of time, you know that while I love a piece backing, I think they look awesome. It's such a nice way to finish a quilt. By the time I get to the backing part of my project, I do not want to piece it. I just want it to be done and send off to my quilter. So I often will use a 108 inch wide backing fabric. There is a website 
that I still use to figure out my backing fabric because it's so convenient. It's mywebquilter.com and then I know there's a backslash and then some more words after that. So I'm going to link to it, but all it is is it's just gonna pop up a page and it's just specifically for calculating your backing fabric. It lets you input the dimensions of your quilt, the width and the length, and then you can input the width of your fabric backing. So maybe you have 40 inches, 42, 60, 90, 108, whatever your backing fabric uh, width might be, you put that number in. And then you would also put in how much overage you want the backing to allow for. Many long arm quilters require four inches around the whole perimeter of the quilt. So eight inches, both in length and width in addition to the measurements of your quilt top. So this calculator allows you to add that in automatically. It then just spits out the yardage information that you need and it even tells you how many strips you'd have to cut and if you're piecing horizontally or vertically your seams using those measurements. So it's a really neat tool. Like I said, I will link to that and that is how I approach backing. 108 often just because it is simpler and faster by the time I get to the end. Now, I have heard a great tip that if you do want a piece backing, maybe you want to piece it at the beginning of your project rather than waiting to the end of your project. And that way it's ready and waiting for you by the time you finish your quilt top. So if you're like me and you find that by the time you get to the end, you just wanna be done and no more piecing, maybe piece it at the beginning of your project. All right, next question. And if you think of any questions while I'm chatting that you wanna leave down below, I still have a whole bunch of questions that I could pull from and we'll just keep doing this periodically. I always think these are fun. Okay, Stephanie Stitches. If you had to pick two fabric lines, one of your own and another, and one of another designer, what would be your favorite two lines? And then she gave a four example. She said hers are Hollyberry is her favorite of mine. And then she likes Nest by Lella Boutique. I had to think about this. I saw this question come through and I wasn't sure what I thought. Usually the fabric line that I like best of my own is whichever one I am currently working with. So right now I am very frantically making quilt tops for fabrics that you guys are going to get to see, um, I think the beginning of March. And so I'm really excited about those quilt tops. I'm excited to share new fabrics with you. And I think it's just a beautiful line of fabric. So that's the one that I love now. And of course, I'm pretty excited about Sunwashed because it's not quite in quilt shops yet, but it will be very soon. And it's always so much fun when fabrics get into quilt shops because then you guys get to start making pretty things with it. And it's just fun. So my favorites change depending on what I'm working with and what's coming. My favorites from other designers. That one is harder for me to say because I like so many different fabrics. I like a lot of different Moda fabrics designers, some of their lines. I love working with, um, Stephanie mentioned Lella Boutique. I love working with Vanessa's fabrics. I also really enjoy Joanna of Fig Tree. She always has beautiful lines. Basic Gray, Primitive Gatherings. Um, I think I could just go on and on. Sherry and Chelsea, a lot of their fabrics mix so pretty with some of my fabric lines, so I like using theirs. But then we have all of the fabric companies that aren't Moda. We have, we have those too. And uh, there's lots of fabric designers from other fabric companies that I really enjoy. I'm often drawn to Heather Bailey's fabric lines and I really like Kim Deal's fabric lines too because they're so different from what I use, but she often is still using a whole rainbow of color, which always is attractive to me in a fabric line. So that's a lot harder for me to narrow down my picks from other designers. There's just too many to narrow it down. We're gonna go to the next question. All right. Oh, this is another from Stephanie. This is a fun question. How many quilts do you make in a year? This has changed a lot in recent years. I used to make all of my own samples for my business. And some years I would make as many as 20 to 30 quilts in a year. And the longer that I have been doing this, 
I have started to send out some of those quilts to sample makers so that I am not making all of the quilt tops myself. So that number has gone down drastically. Um, I did, I'm working on five, five quilt tops right now. So I'm starting out my year with a lot of quilt tops. So that will be about five quilt tops in just the first couple weeks of January here, but I don't anticipate that it is going to stay that many quilt tops as we work our way throughout the year. It really depends on my schedule, what other deadlines I have to meet as to if I am making those quilts myself or if maybe I'm moving some of those out to sample makers. So it varies a lot. All right, I'm gonna choose another, what's this? Okay, Blissfield Depot. This was an Instagram question. Do you wash your quilt fabric before you cut it? Not anymore. I used to pre-wash all of my fabrics when I very first started making quilts. I've been making quilts for about, oh, 25 years or so. And over the years, I have gotten away from pre-washing fabrics. Now, I still feel that it's a great idea to pre-wash those problematic colors, reds, purples, navies, especially if you purchase from a variety of different fabric stores, maybe a variety of different qualities of fabric. Sometimes those colors can be problematic when we wash. Now, I don't pre-wash. I do always use Shout Color Catchers, maybe even two or three of them on the first wash of a new quilt. And that's the way I approach it, but I would never, I, I can't say that it is it is not a good idea to pre-wash those reds and purples and navies because you can get yourself into some pro into some problems if those colors run when you wash it the first time. Let me grab a drink of water. This is a lot of chatting. Tigzi is still laying right here so nicely down in front of me, just chilling out. And he's not attacking anything. He's just relaxing and being chill. Okay. We will move on to the next question. We're gonna go with this little guy. This is from Jane Meyer. I want to make a simple quilt using darker colorways, wild iris greens and purples, and I don't want to use a light background. I haven't found an appropriate pattern. Could you make some suggestions for how to proceed or, so, or should I scrap, pardon the expression, the whole idea? Well, what I would consider doing would be to scrap background fabric altogether and maybe opt for a fabric that only utilizes the prints. There are a lot of great quilt patterns like that. Like um, I think Yellow Brick Road doesn't use any background fabric if I remember correctly. That's such a popular quick to piece quilt, but there would be lots of others where if you didn't wanna use a light background, but you were unsure maybe of what color background you wanted to pair with your purples and greens, just skip the background altogether and focus on the prints. Highlight those prints in your quilt. Something to think about. Chime in as you're watching this if you would have other suggestions or maybe quilt patterns that you've used that have really highlighted the prints in a collection without so much of a focus on the background fabrics because that, we all have different quilting patterns in our sewing pattern collection, and some of you I'm sure have patterns that would work really well for Jane. Okay, this little one. Stacy O'Donnell. She asks, when you are piecing a quilt, are you back stitching at all? I feel like I should be back stitching when I'm piecing, but it shouldn't matter, right? Since I'm going to sew all the pieces together in the end, I feel the urge to back stitch. This is a good question, and I, I think I thought this when I started making quilts too. It sort of feels like you're leaving those stitches undone and that if we don't do something with them, we're gonna run into a problem, but typically we don't backstitch in making quilt blocks. Um, sometimes depending on like a paper piecing, I can think of certain paper piecing blocks that I've done where I did, um, well, I take that back. I'm thinking about this and I'm not even sure that I did when I was paper piecing at all. But maybe around the perimeter, you would do like a stay stitching. Once your quilt is completely done, it can be nice to do like a stay stitch around the entire perimeter of your quilt to hold those seams in place because those with handling and if you're if you're quilting it or sending it out to be quilted, those seams, those seam ends could come apart 
if you don't have a border on especially so that would be one spot where you might run want to run a stay stitch but as far as um back stitching while you're piecing you really shouldn't need to because you're going to be locking those seams into place when you stitch over top of them as you're sewing those patches together. If you would encounter something where you would notice that your pieces are coming apart and that they're not staying, you could certainly consider it, but it's not typically done in quilt making. All right, moving on to the next one. Oops, my little paper's getting away from me. Here we go. Kimberly Seam, what is your favorite pre-cut? And what do you find most difficult in the process of making a quilt? Do you have a favorite block to make? And what other crafts do you enjoy? So a bunch of fun questions here from Kimberly. My favorite pre-cut is a layer cake. I feel like you can make a lot of great quilts from layer cakes. You can treat it as a charm pack if you wanted to. A layer cake would be the equivalent of four charm packs. So if you had a quilt that required a number of charm packs, you could probably substitute a layer cake for it. And I just think it's really versatile. Plus you end up with nice big 10 inch squares of fabric so you can easily show off larger scale prints. You don't lose a lot of the prints in, as you do in some of the other pre-cuts. Layer cakes. What do you find most difficult in the process of making a quilt? Um, deciding which way to press my seams. <laughs> That's probably what gives me the most trouble, especially as I'm writing a quilt pattern. So I don't know if that's exactly the way you were meaning this question, but when I'm writing a quilt pattern, that is the thing that I have to think about the hardest to make sure that everything is going to nest. I don't want to press seams open unless I absolutely have to. So that means making sure that everything lines up. It matches from this block to this block. Ideally, if we turn the block all the way around, it will match with the block beside it, even if we turn that block all around. And so it's a lot of thinking to get all of those seams to line up and get that pressed accurately. And sometimes it's even, I'll, I'll plot it out um, when I'm working on the pattern and then I'll make test blocks, try it out, make sure everything's matching up, change pressing until we get it just right. So that, that definitely takes me the longest when I'm working on a quilt, just figuring out those pressing instructions so I can put out a good pattern. Um, do I have a favorite block to make? I like making most blocks. I really like the way an Ohio star block looks within a quilt. So I always think that's fun to make. Um, there's not a lot. I, I don't like curves maybe as much as, as some other blocks. I like applique. I like small piecing, big piecing. I think, I think I get along pretty well with most blocks. And then her last question is, what other crafts do you enjoy? So not a craft, but I love reading books. And I have to be really careful about when I start a book because if I start it at a bad time when I need to get other things done, those other things are not going to get done. So I find that it's best for me if I start a book maybe on a Sunday afternoon when I can read the book all in one sitting because <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen. And that just is not a good plan during the week when I can't just sit and read an entire book in one sitting. Um, or if my family needs fed, or if anybody needs picked up or dropped off, <laughs> uh, reading books can get me into trouble if, I, if I'm not careful. How much more time do we have? We have three minutes. Okay, so let's choose this question right here. Um, from Margaret Bergen. I'm really enjoying your newest book, Oh Happy Day. Thank you. I was so happy with the way that book came together. Do you already have plans for a next book or would you do any more collaborations like with Sherry McConnell? I'm hoping to make the Sunday Best Sampler next year. So a Sunday Best Quilts was a book that Sherry McConnell and I co-wrote together and it was really fun working together with her. I don't have any other plans in the works to collaborate right now, but I'm always open to it. It's a lot of fun working with another author and I think you get a really neat perspective when you have two different quilty people using their ideas for one book. So I'd definitely be open to it. I do have a fun idea for another book that I think would be really cool. So we'll have to see when writing a book, it takes a lot of time 
over a very short period of time. And so I have to really make sure that I have time set aside where I don't have anything else that is going to, deadlines that are going to pop up that would take my attention away from just working on the book. So that is definitely something that I have to consider when I think about writing a book. But yeah, I'm always open and have fun ideas. It's just a matter of making it happen. All right, I think that is all the time we have for today. Those 20 minutes went by pretty quickly. I hope you enjoyed kind of some of those answers. My basket is still really full of more questions and I have so many more that I didn't even fit in here. So we will definitely be doing this again. If you thought of something in regard to one of the questions I answered or maybe an entirely different question, feel free to drop it in the comments below and we'll see if we can get that answered in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.